Hello everyone, this is Rajkumar Singh. I welcome you in my lecture series on quantum mechanics. Today, in this lecture, we will discuss about time-dependent perturbation theory. I have divided this discussion in three parts. In the first part, we will have a general outline and the derivations on this time-dependent perturbation theory. And in the second part, we will discuss about the case of constant perturbation. And finally, in the third part, we will talk about harmonic perturbation. Now, when the Hamiltonian of a system depends explicitly on time, then it does not have IN solutions. And therefore, no stationary states are formed. This is quite different from the case of time independent perturbation theory where we have seen that there exist definite IN functions. However, the time development of the state of system can be described by directly solving Schrodinger equation. But again, this solution will depend on the nature of dependence of Hamiltonian on time. Time dependent perturbation theory is most useful in studying the radiative transition of atomic system from one quantum state to another. Time dependent perturbation theory is appropriate for the phenomenon that are described by Hamiltonians which can be split into two parts. Number one, the time independent part H0 and the other one, a time dependent part which will be the perturbation Hamiltonian denoted by lambda H dash function of time. Lambda is taken to be less than 1 to ensure the effect of time dependent perturbation is small compared to H0. Therefore, total Hamiltonian of the system H is equal to sum of sum of the Hamiltonian which is independent of time H0 and the one which is dependent on time given by lambda H dash. The splitting of Hamiltonian as we discussed in equation 1 is obtained commonly in practice when an atomic system is placed in some radiation for some time or when an electron passes through the field of an electron or a nucleus. In such cases we say that perturbation is switched on, H dash T is operative and when switched off it ceases to be functional. Now, for the unperturbed system, as usual, we have H0 psi m equal to Em psi m or in sort we can write H0 ket m equal to Em ket m and this bray and ket mk equal to delta mk where delta mk is the delta function which becomes 1 for m equal to k. Now, Schrodinger equation pertaining to this equation 1 is ih cross dou psi by dou t and this is equal to h psi. Now, on the right hand side for h we will write h0 plus lambda h dash. So, we have this expression as equation 4. Now, this equation 4 can be solved by expanding psi t in terms of the complete ion ket given in the curly bracket by ket m of h0. That means we can write psi t as equal to summation over m c m function of time into exponential minus emt by h cross and then ket m where c m t are time dependent expansion coefficients. Now we will use this expression for psi t in equation 4 above, we have ih cross dou by dou t and this is the expression for psi. This is equal to h0 within bracket we have expression for psi plus lambda and then h dash psi. So here we have h dash and the rest is expression for psi. This is equal to on the left hand side we have the differentiation with respect to time. So we have two terms from here. Once we get cmt dot this is the derivative and the second term is as usual we have taken it as a constant and in the second part we have taken the derivative of the second term 
which is the exponential i e m t by h cross ket m and we have kept constant c m t on the right hand side we have the two terms one is coming from h naught and this bracket so this gives a first term on the right hand side and the second term is due to this lambda and the bracket term we can see here the second term on the left hand side that means this term cancel out with the first term on the right hand side that means this term and we are left with i h cross summation over m c m t dot exponential bracket ket this is equal to lambda times this expression let it be equation 6 now to solve this equation 6 we multiply this equation 6 with uh, bray n and exponential which is the complex conjugate of the exponential part which is in equation 6 and using them in equation 3 using equation 3 which gives delta m k equal to 1 for m equal to k so we have here i h cross summation over m c m dot t then exponential and we get delta m n this is due this is for the bray m and ket n and this is on the right hand side equal to lambda summation over this term including h dash t as the matrix element n h dash m now this expression for m equal to n delta m n becomes 1 and we have so m equal to n so this exponential term becomes 0 so exponential part gives 1 delta m n is 1 for m equal to n so on the left hand side we are left with only i h cross c m dot and on the right hand side we have this complete expression so from here we obtain an expression for c m t dot which is given by lambda and this i h cross goes in the denominator which is written as i h cross inverse and this bracket term as it is in the previous slide so this equation 7 is a set of coupled differential equation for coefficient cmt and it can be solved exactly in some cases but when the exact solution is not possible we know we we resort to approximation method by expanding cmt in power series like this one cmt equal to cm naught t plus lambda cm 1 t plus lambda square cm 2 t and so on with this condition that the coefficients are in descending order so that this finally converge to a finite value that means cm naught t is greater than cm 1 t and this cm 1 t is greater than cm 2 t and so on now using this equation 8 in equation 7 as it is in the previous slide we get on the left hand side we have the derivative so it is cm naught dot t plus lambda cm 1 dot t plus lambda square cm 2 dot t and so on and on the right hand side we have lambda i h cross inverse within the bracket we have summation cm naught t plus lambda cm 1 t plus lambda square cm 2 t and so on and the exponential term and this matrix element now equating the coefficients of equal powers of lambda on both sides so first zero order term so this is the zero order term cm naught dot t on the left hand side and on the right hand side we don't have any term so it is equal to zero first order term left hand side we have cm1 dot t and on the right hand side we have this lambda here so this is the first order term and the exponential part so it is written here and second order term is cm2 t on the left hand side dot and on the right hand side we have lambda and this lambda this becomes lambda square so this is the second order term cm1 t then exponential part and the matrix element n h dash m so we have listed here the zero order term first order term and the second order term now similarly we can go on writing other higher order terms therefore we observe that cm naught t equal to constant because you see cm naught dot t equal to zero so this gives cm naught t equal to constant let it be equal to cm naught zero 
Now to determine CM1, CM2, T and so on, uh, we have to invoke initial condition for the state of the system. Let at t equal to 0, the initial state of system is get k such that h not k equal to e k k. So then from equation 5, we have psi naught equals to get k and this is in the expansion term summation over m c m naught get m. From here, we can work out using the scalar multiplication with the Bray on both sides with m. We will have Bray m k and here we will have Bray m k to m that becomes 1. So c m naught equals to delta m k and that is we consider the perturbation is limited to first order only. That means c m 0 equal to c m naught 0 c m naught t c m 1 0 equal to c m 2 2 0 and so on. So from equation 10 we get expression for c m 1 t this is equal to let us go back to equation 10 and we have this expression c m dot c m 1 dot t and this complete expression. Now there we use the expression do the integration we get expression for cm1 t. So this is equal to integral 0 to t and we have the same terms on within the integral along with this dt. So this gives c1 t equals to integral 0 to t ih cross inverse exponential term and the matrix element n h dash k dt. Now from equation 5 we observe that cnt and the exponential minus ent is the probability amplitude for the state ket psi t to exist in the ion state n of h0. Therefore, the probability for the state to have grown from initial state k to final state n at time t, which is known as transition probability, this will be given by p k to n equal to modulus square of this c n t exponential minus i e n t by h cross. This is the same term which is here and when we do the modulus square of this we get c n t modulus square because the now from equation 5 we see that c n t and this exponential minus e n t by h cross is the probability amplitude for the state psi t. To exist in the ion state n of h0. Therefore, the probability for the state to have grown from initial state k to a state n at time t known as transition probability will be given by p k to n equal to modulus square of this term and this is equal to c n t uh, whole square because the exponential and this complex conjugate that gives 1. Now, we will discuss the different cases of uh, perturbation to calculate transition probability and we will discuss the cases of constant perturbation and harmonic perturbation in our next lecture. In the part 2 of the lecture we will talk about constant perturbation and in the final part that is part 3 we will talk about harmonic perturbation. So this is not the end of this lecture you have to continue with part 2 and part 3 as well in order to have complete knowledge of time dependent perturbation theory. With this, I come to an end of our lecture on part 1 of time-dependent perturbation theory. Thank you so much for watching.